Hello, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen today. I title this message, False Prophets in the Ears of Leaders. False Prophets in the Ears of Leaders. God is allowing false prophets to speak all sorts of lies, to do a bit of future faking with some of these leaders. And we're talking about not just in our land, but international, internationally as well. We are in the word um, in Jeremiah 28. We're talking about the false prophet Hananiah. And what's interesting is you can glean some of what is happening now. If you do care to go deep with this thing, um, you can glean some of the information that I am speaking using the scriptures to apply to what is going on right now. Okay. False prophets raised up to speak all sorts of falsehoods and to future fake the leaders all across the land. In addition to those internationally, this all ties in to the results that some of you all know full well are going to spin this nation upside down and sideways. Jeremiah 28, in the fifth month of the same year, the fourth year, early in the reign of Zedekiah, king of Judah, the prophet Hananiah, son of Azor, who was from Gibeon, said to me in the house of the Lord, in the presence of the priests and all the people, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel says, I will break the yoke of the king of Babylon. Okay. Some of you all, you have referenced the king of Babylon and you also tied that king of Babylon to modern day kings running nations now. Continuing to read Jeremiah 28, 3. Within two years, I will bring back to this place all the articles of the Lord's house that Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, removed from here and took to Babylon. Verse four, I will also bring back to this place Jehoiakim, son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, and all the other exiles from Judah who went to Babylon, declares the Lord, for I will break the yoke of the king of Babylon. Then the prophet Jeremiah replied to the prophet Hananiah before the priests and all the people who were standing in the house of the Lord. He said, Amen. May the Lord do so. May the Lord fulfill the words you have prophesied by bringing the articles of the Lord's house and all the exiles back to this place from Babylon. Nevertheless, listen to what I have to say in your hearing and in the hearing of all the people from early times. Listen here. Listen closely. OK, this is verse eight. And I am reading out of the Life Application Bible by Tyndale. From early times, the prophets who preceded you and me have prophesied, listen to this, war, disaster, and plague against many countries and great kingdoms. But the prophet who prophesies peace will be recognized as one truly sent by the Lord only if his prediction comes true. Then the prophet Hananiah took the yoke off the neck of the prophet Jeremiah and broke it. And he said before all the people, this is what the Lord says. In the same way, will I break the yoke of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, off the neck of all the nations within two years. At this, the prophet Jeremiah went on his way shortly after the prophet Hananiah. Hananiah had broken the yoke off the neck of the prophet Jeremiah. The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. Go and tell Hananiah, this is what the Lord says. You have broken a wooden yoke, but in its place, you will get a yoke of iron. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel says. I will put an iron yoke on the necks of all these nations to make them serve Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and they will serve him. I will even give him control over the wild animals. Then the prophet Jeremiah said to Hananiah, the prophet, listen, Hananiah, the Lord has not sent you yet. You have persuaded this nation to trust in lies. Therefore, this is what the Lord says. I'm about to remove you from the face of the earth this very year 
you are going to die because you have preached rebellion against the Lord. In the seventh month of that same year, Hananiah, the prophet died. Can I say to you that some of you all have said all sorts of things concerning what is going to happen to this current president. And some individuals have said this, said all sorts of things just to simply put, get more page views. Can I tell you, unless the Lord releases you to say exactly what happens to a ruler, you don't open up your mouth. There are people who give specific detail about all sorts of things, but the Lord says, I am not with them. And I don't want you preaching that sort of word, because if you were to preach that certain word, you would be considered a false prophet. And people nowadays do download, do copy and do hold on to what folks say. You don't want your information to show up and end up deeming you a false prophet. So make sure that you hear from the Lord. So when we take a look at the iron yoke, the iron yoke is definitely representative of what is taking place even now. There are so many that are not receiving the word of peace. If you are that prophet or prophetess that folks have called you the negative Nancy at work, or they've called you depressed Debbie or whatever else they want to call you because you are not giving the peace message. You're not giving the prosperous message. You're not giving a message that is going to make people laugh and smile. You're not entertaining them then that makes you a prophet of the Lord. Hallelujah. That makes you an honest prophet. That makes you a righteous prophet. But once again, we're not giving specific details as to what is happening to rulers because here's what's going to happen. If you are that one that's familiar with Jonah, the book of Jonah, you know that Jonah gave a word according to what the Lord wanted Jonah to give. And There were things though that didn't take place, even though Jonah said, and that is because God told Jonah words that they don't have to take place. If the people will do this, if the people will do that, this is why for some of you all, as long as the people are willing to pray, seek God's face, do the right thing, then no certain things are not going to happen. So there are those prophets that are preaching a word from the Lord and there is a cautionary warning and there are things that people are supposed to do. And so therefore evil will not befall some folk, some establishments won't show up in the media, but we know better. We know that this world that we live in is so rebellious and that no matter what you tell some people, they don't want to listen. They sit up there and they laugh and they mock and they shun just like those foolish people did when Noah was building his ark. Can I tell you that for some of you all, depending on where you are, especially if you're in cities, you got to be like Noah building your ark and getting gone out those cities. I will tell you that I had rented out more apartments out in a former location that I was at. And the location where I was, was near mountains. And when I talked to people and I asked them, what brings you out here? Don't you like your high rise down there? You know, in the city, they said, there's so much happening in the city. I don't want to be there when more is going to happen. I want to be where the mountains are. You see? There are more people who think like that because they know that there is so much ahead that is going to happen in cities all across our land, as well as other lands. False prophets, saints, as well as sinners are in the leader's ears. And we are not to listen to these leaders who tell us what these false prophets who we know got a long track record of being false prophets are saying. 
They're going to look like they know what they're talking about. They're going to pull some things out of the scriptures to tickle our ears. They're going to stand next to leaders and present themselves as being quite knowledgeable and wise. Didn't we tell some folks about the antichrist years ago? Didn't we tell some folks about the false priests, the false prophets? Didn't we tell some people about the plagues? And didn't we say that the one true God was angry at so many individuals because they had turned away from him and we were telling people to draw near? If you all didn't go back into old audios, no need because I'm catching you up right now. We were calling people out of the church even. The churches that were lukewarm, the, the churches that were not uh, given the type of word that was feeding individuals. They wanted to keep you, uh, listening to messages that sound more like Sunday school messages. But now you got to be in this word on your own that you can't trust the middle man or the middle woman, especially those who have, or who had the mega churches. What is being said? What are some of the things that I can get into that I'm released to tell you? Some of you all, we have already discussed some of these things, but I got to catch some people up. And some of this is going to be the first time that you heard some of these uh um, topics, if you will. And you can do your share of research because in time I'll probably share more with you as it relates to you. But a lot of times these topics, these agendas are really nothing that we need to be concerned about, but they're used to distract the public. They put information out there so that you'll go down their rabbit hole and this way you won't be paying attention to what they're going to do once again to impact your taxes, what they're going to do again to impact your investments, what they're going to do again in terms of dealing with your uh, seniors and the checks that they receive and the unemployment checks and, you know, the, the monies that are due you that they're still holding on to because you didn't bother to do your necessary research and look up some of those monies that are due you. You see things that really matter to you, things that are going to impact your household. They don't want you paying attention to things that are going to uh, continue to create all sorts of division and separation long after the president has been elected. They don't want you to turn those sour moments into something that is viable and usable. And that is going to continue to promote change in this land. But God is going to keep up the protesting and God, I'm giving some prophecy. God is going to keep up uh, the individuals who are frustrated with the economy and they're losing monies by the day. And God is going to be the one that's going to continue with the sickness. And God is going to be the one that's going to not only continue with the existing sickness as we know today, but coming illnesses. And God is the one that's going to raise up more wildfires when the wildfire typical season shows up. And God is the one that's going to continue with the flooding. And God is the one that's going to continue with with the uprise of earthquakes. It is God, it is God, it is, it is God. Yes, man had his time of manufacturing events and man will continue to be used to manufacture events and man will continue to be used to script events and there will continue to be the entertainers like puppets on strings being fed scripts to tell us to be quiet and shut your mouth and that's conspiracy and you don't know what you're talking about because their names were dragged through the mud but why would their names be dragged through the mud because they had a wicked spirit about them that was obtained through the various parties that they attended that they got a wicked spirit about them because of the oaths that they took and they got a wicked spirit about them because of the things that they ingested in various places in their bodies. And we have been told time and time again not to listen to their music, 
not to support their movies. And yet there are those who want to play on two sides of the fence and they want to continue to feed into false God worship, utilizing all sorts of holiday events, including, but not limited to Halloween, which is the most satanic one going. When this channel was created, it was created on a day that the devil did not want. And that was his day, which was October 31st. The devil states, uh, uh, he had claim on that day. And he said, who are you? And the Lord said, you are to use this channel to draw people near and for them to listen to the wisdom and to listen to the prophecy. And yes, you're like that girlfriend who is just spitting real truth. I'm telling you in Jesus mighty name, I can't make these things up in my flesh. I couldn't care less, but when the spirit of the Lord takes over, I got to say what needs to be said or else something could fall upon me for not speaking truth. It could very well be blood on my hands and I don't want that. So that's why I speak these truths and I know it's uncomfortable. And I know for some of you all, you squirm in your chair and you get the cold chills and so forth. And you don't know who I'm serving or whatever else, but let me remind you, I am serving the one true God. God is the one who created his son, Jesus, who died on the cross to save us from our sins. When Jesus ascended unto heaven, some of you all know Jesus is the great Messiah, the great prophet, the one who said that he was, I am the God. But you also have to understand that he is the son of God. When he ascended unto heaven, he left behind the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is what comes upon you when you finally accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. The Holy Spirit comes upon you when you have been baptized before men and women and have sold your soul to the one true God rather than to the demonic. The Holy Spirit is what gives you the word of knowledge. The Holy Spirit is what tells you that who is in these leaders ears is nothing more than false prophets. Some of them have been so far away from the one true God because they got tired of the disappointments because they got tired of all of the negativity that happened in their families. They turned away from the Lord because Satan's message was stronger and won them over. And so because of the side that they're on, they are feeding rulers with very, very, very sophisticated lies, cunning lies, lies that are about padding their pockets. Some of these subjects that have taken some of you all down rabbit holes and some of these subjects that you're unfamiliar with, but you'll get familiar with them if they relate to you, if they don't relate to you, there's no sense in doing any research. You can save yourself the headaches and the heartaches, but to get caught up on the things that you all need to know, but don't necessarily have to do something with each and every subject, universal wage income, where everybody is pretty much paid a similar amount of money. Small business, small businesses being closed. This is something that has been going on and they continue to do it and they continue to have, and they still plan on having another shutdown. Okay. But people are rising up. People are still talking about what they don't want. People are still making money. The economy's doing good. Why should we do this, that, and the other? When that is a lie straight from the pits of hell. The economy is going to take a dive. And I've already told some folks to be very conservative about their investments and not to be radical at this particular time or get involved with high risk sort of things lest you lose your money 
as we move into December going into the new year. And it's not going to stop. There's going to be so many roller coaster rides with this economy. But the small businesses closing is pretty much closing up small threats. Trying to keep the wealth among the wealthy. The two-party system is something that has long been attacked and the two-party system is nev it has never been what you thought it was based on all of the programming and the brainwashing and the movies and the mind manipulation and the get out and vote statements and so forth. We have long known that the two-party system is an illusion. Bottom line, those of you all who did not want to believe it, you need to do your research and you're going to find that it's going to be difficult to find some really good information on this because anytime there's an election year, they hide, they suppress. I did research on this sort of thing back in 2014. I would have loved to refer you to the website where I get into specific details. I give you all sorts of links and so forth, but they suppressed it. Okay. I was a writer long before I was a speaker on this channel and you're not going to be able to find what I wrote. I also talked about the voting machines and all that, that was go and all that was going on with it. And I even show video that people had put up on various channels showing the glitches in the system and how when people were voting for Obama, how it was automatically switching over. So, you know, it is what it is, right? No, it's not. That was by design. There were shows and movies and so forth that even put some of that storyline in uh, these uh, fictional shows and so forth. Just to prove how easy it is to manipulate those computerized voting machines. That's why they were there in the first place so that they were easy to manipulate. Suppress voting fraud and rigged sorts of information that is quite telling, quite revealing. And from people who have worked in these systems, you don't find that unless you do a lot of digging, unless somebody has made copies and downloaded and uh, re-uploaded at least four times before it's taken back down again. But all of the tactics that were used to suppress voting, all of the um, tactics that were used to suppress voting fraud, and all of the tactics that were used to talk about rigged elections, it didn't make matters any better when you got a president who is self-serving, self-righteous, and overall selfish, a narcissist, blowing this up. It would have been better coming from the people themselves, the people who were on the front lines. If you got to look at all of that good information the past 10 years or so, good for you. But if you're just now catching up and you're going with what Trump is saying, you only know part of the story. You don't know all of it. And it's not just about what he says. It's about what's been going on for quite some time. They're ushering in a new system. That is what is happening. That is what they've been wanting to happen because the old system has been known for being fraudulent. Even people in other countries know how our quote unquote democracy really is because they've had their hands in the cookie jar for a long, 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 long time. Totalitarianism, a lot of folks have talked about that. Oh, this is where we're headed. They don't necessarily want the totalitarianism together collectively as a group. There are many people who do not want that. So those who have the power to be able to speak up against it, you speak up against it. And not only that, you work your plan and plan your work so that this sort of thing doesn't happen. But we do know that there are moves in that direction. There are so many systems that you can come up with if one would just lean on God's unchanging hand. You can still have a democracy, but the type of democracy where you keep outside influencers out of it. And 
you're not relying on the electoral college when you clearly see that the popular vote says what it says. And then on top of that, these systems that you know that people can tamper with, you know that they can mess around with, you know that they can take envelopes and throw them away, or you know that they can be able to rig systems or have people in lo locations where they can be threatening or what have you. But they haven't figured it all out yet in terms of how can we make pretty much a system that is more foolproof than not. White supremacy, Black Lives Matter, this was systematic. It was by design, even down to the black contract, bringing that back up again. All of these things, what do they do? They separate, they divide, they get people angry. Meanwhile, solutions, solutions, solutions. Okay, somebody brings up a solution and then somebody on the opposite side brings up a problem. All you can do is be the individual that, look, I'm not a part of your group or that group, but what I am going to do is in my own strength, I'm going to fight. I'm going to fight for what my family needs. I'm going to fight for what matters to the one true God. And what matters to the one true God is no matter what color of your skin, God, he is one about the soul matters. And there are those that are on both sides of the fence that if they keep on creating the division and the divide, there's going to be, unfortunately, not folks walking down streets protesting after death, it's going to be folks destined to go to hell because their hearts aren't in the right place. They're not interested in hearing from the creator. They're just like the leader who shuts out the truth and chooses to believe the lying prophet. And so just as Hananiah the prophet that, so too will these false prophets who are spewing off all sorts of hate and exaggerating things and keeping out the truth because it's better to feed the public the lie to keep certain agendas going. These sorts of things take place. God allows for folks to be under a curse for their foolishness. The mask and staying at home and all of these things that we were told to do. And we clearly saw that things were much different and felt better. And when you went outside, the air even smelled a little bit more fresher because you didn't have so much traffic out there on the road. And not only that, we didn't see as many sick people when folks were doing, lo and behold, what doctors and scientists had said before people started muddying the waters. Genetic editing and DNA, scientists messing around again with what God with what God created when science is used for right purposes. It's a beautiful thing, but where there's good, there's also evil. And there are those individuals that are ordering up children like somebody ordering up a specialty burger at a restaurant. And we got individuals who want to come back to life. And we got individuals who want clones of themselves and all sorts of experiments have taken place to make these sorts of things happen. We know that predictive programming is very much in movies and that not only do movies show up because, oh, it's for entertainment. Movies have long been created to measure the pulse, to survey you, to see how you would respond, to see if you would be okay with this particular agenda. 
uh, things that disrupt your morals, your ethics. Let's put this in a movie. Let's see how the public respond. Okay, let's put something that we know we have every intention of making happen in the future. Their favorite celebrity being murdered or their favorite celebrity dying by an accident or a drug overdose. Let's use someone to play this role or that role before it happens and see what the public thinks about it. And if we like the reaction, then we're going to use that and actually make a celebrity do some things that eventually lead to his or her death. And of course, warning you of things to come or dangling these things right in front of you. Well, it makes some folks good, feel good later on. Well, we warned you, we told you about it. Transhumanism, superhuman beings, human beings that defy everything that we have known human beings to typically do. When used for right reasons, say the individual who has lost various limbs, okay, let's put some machinery to bring those limbs back in that body, okay. But when used for other reasons that can't be disclosed, that are confidential, that only certain people can hear, they sell the unsuspecting on the so-called good of it all. But when things go out of control, who's gonna put those superhuman beings back in the box? I'm seeing in a spirit where they can't keep can't keep them under control. I'm seeing the most weirdest looking human beings, which they're not human beings, but they're creatures. They're creatures because that's the only way I can describe them. It sort of puts you in the mind of what the, um, the, what revelation describes strange half man, half, what is that <laughs> half animal? And they're trying to catch these things and they're running around and they're despicable. They're nasty. They're just downright evil looking, but the military is running around trying to keep these things under control, but they're on buildings and they're in the streets and some of them got wings. They escaped. They escaped out of these underground shelters of sorts. They escaped out of these uh, places that have layers upon layers of protection. Somehow they become so intelligent that they rise above ground and we see them and they're acting like insects, so to speak. You know how an insect just lands and there's really no rhyme or reason for it landing you know, on a building or, in, or on top of a home or out there on the sidewalks but it's just there. It's, but the threat of it is the fact that it looks so ugly. It looks crazy. And you could tell where it was once a woman because of the breasts, but then there's all these other things that's on it. And then you could tell where something was once a man because you see the man's body part, but there's all these other things on these objects, these creatures but they put these very smart brains in them before they grew into these grotesque uh, things. So they operate like animals and they also operate like humans and whatever else these things are, okay? And, and when there's the rising up of these things and there's the satanic rituals and the occult uh, types of magic and witchcraft that's associated with them, it suppresses, it suppresses the good. But I do, I do see military forces trying to put these things back in their box because they somehow escaped. They're so smart. They figured out how to 
be seen among men and women, Lord Jesus. This is where I'm turning into the book of Revelation. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus, though, for the word. Because in this way, some of you all won't freak out. So what is this business of I need a weapon? Because if they're half human and half animal, they're going to go out into the wild. They're going to find places where there's lots of trees, right? And mountains. And if your house is over there near a mountain and you see something like this on, on the top of your roof, you don't know if it's going to bite you or kill you or do something. So those that live in these areas where strange things happen in the woods, so to speak, don't knock those people for wanting to get guns. Don't knock those people for wanting to go underground and have their share of six months or more food. Don't say that these people are out of their minds. Just like God can speak to the believer about his or her wayward in the faith family the God also speaks to people who live in environments where their locations can be threatened and have already been threatened. They see things in the dark with their night scopes and so forth. They hear bumps in the night. They see strange experimental types of things. They see witches and warlocks in the wood doing all in the woods doing all sorts of sacrifices. They know that some men and women their minds are not about peace but are about war and hatred. And so they arm up. But of course, those individuals who have been exposed by those uh people who see this sort of stuff they're going to say, those are the crazies. Those are the weird ones. Those are the ones that we need to take their land. Because they know things, saints. But until you see what some of these people have seen, until God himself shows you in the spiritual realm, like he showed me some things, you're going to continue to assume that everybody who's a gun-toting, Bible-toting person is crazy. And that's not true. These people are strong. These people got good sense. Just like you got entertainers that not everybody is under some kind of monarch mind control. They just like butterflies. Some folk. <laughs> Seriously. No joke. I like butterflies because I know butterflies represent things. For instance, the monarch. We know that the caterpillar, right? Crawls and eventually blossoms into a butterfly, right? Doesn't mean that you've been under some kind of programming or what have you. You just appreciate life. If you're a child of God, you go out there, you look at nature, you respect nature and all that's in nature, right? But yes, there are those individuals that are under monarch programming. MK Ultra didn't go away, wasn't just back in the day. And these individuals glitch out. Their programming gets the best of them. They are um, hit up with uh, just so much um uh so their their um their um their senses are stimulated far too much sometimes and so the man just shuts down or goes away to protect them so that they don't crack up in front of folk these are things that the holy spirit showed me some of them are also not only under the type of uh control but that, that men have put upon them, but they also are taking prescription medicines too. So a combination of both of them and you wouldn't feel sane. Some of you all know how some of these strong drugs, um, your body reacts. And it was nothing but the Lord who he allowed me to experience some things because they give you all sorts of medicines. When you've had surgery, they give you all sorts of medicines when um, you have, uh, had your share of, um, mental breakdown, you see? So I got a taste of what some of the weirdness is all about. And I thank the Lord though, for guiding me toward those individuals who they had experienced their share of issues and didn't mind talking about these things on various channels and writing articles and those researchers who showed some of the symptoms and the side effects and people who actually worked in the industry, you see. 
So this way it wasn't about theory. It was straight up fact. Yes. Antidepressants do certain things. Yes. Um, you know, certain pain medicines have side effects. Um, yes, there are certain types of hypnotic trances and, um, you know, things that, um, sound noises and so forth can produce the cause a person to go out of their mind or to cause a person to live their life a little better, at least for a time until they're triggered. You see, but when you got individuals who, once again, some of these topics that I discussed on this audio, and I'm going to leave it at that. But when you got individuals who want to attack topics where even God himself have given you wisdom, knowledge, have used people to research people who actually worked in these various areas. And then along comes a false prophet, a false teacher, a false counselor or false advisor to tell somebody that or ruler, listen, no, that's not what's going on. That's not what's happening. But instead, this is what's happening. And they take that person off down another rabbit hole. And it's all about making the credit or, or making the public not really listen too closely to what is happening. It's a shame and shame is going to come upon that false prophet. Shame is going to come upon all those individuals who are feeding the lie. Shame is going to come upon them. And when the person wakes up, because eventually if you walk with the Lord long enough, no matter what you've gone through, there's going to be some aspects of your personality that's going to see the truth for what it really is. And you're going to start going around saying, what did I see? What was told to me? What exactly is the truth? Come on now. Don't keep telling me these lies. When you wake up, that's when there are those who want to put you back in your box. There are those that's going to tell other people, don't listen to her. She don't know what she's talking about. Some of us were born with a certain degree of intelligence and some of us went to schools and <laughs> learned way more than what they thought we was going to learn. And some of us have been around some of the most brightest minds. And some of us, we tapped into spiritual things of light, of love, of peace, and of also of war. We know what God's saying. And we also know what the false prophets are saying. And we know that God is not going to continue to let lies have the upper hand. And this is why you got Satan and his minions working day and night coming up with all sorts of ways to suppress the very things that are keeping some of you all mentally, physically, spiritually, and sexually in bondage. And some of us, we still got a long way to go, but we thank God for where he brought us and where he is taking us. I thank you as always for taking time out of your busy schedule to listen. You've been listening to YouTube in Enterprise 7. Feel free to like, subscribe, comment. We do welcome giving on this channel and thank you.